to bring Denver to the front of the congregation. I want to bring Denver to the front of the congregation. Before we move on, we're not just going to let Denver keep skating. We're not going to let Denver keep skating because y'all just think that Mike Johnston, John S-T-O-N, Johnston, I know y'all used to we talk me talking about Brandon Johnson over there in Chicago. We oh don't worry about it. We're gonna get to him shortly. But Mike Johnston is the mayor of Denver. Now, Denver has largely skated under the radar because Denver is not at the forefront of the congregation because there's bigger fish to fry as far as what it is that we see happening in more urban communities. But Denver from what people have been telling me, and I tapped into a couple of people that's over there in Denver, they keep telling me that Denver ain't nothing but another San Francisco. They said that Denver is a hellhole. Is that true? Is that true? Is Denver that bad? Oh, no. Tell me that Denver ain't this bad. I wasn't expecting this. I was expecting to go and hang out with Denver. I got some people over in Denver that I like to tap in with. I was expecting to head over to Denver and see what was happening over there. They say evictions is piling up. They say that it's homelessness everywhere. They say it's encampments all over the place. They say that Denver is almost as bad as over there in Oakland and in San Francisco. Is that true? Now, tonight, some Denver businesses are sounding the alarm about trash and debris from homeless encampments surrounding them. Denver 7's Russell Haythorn spoke to three business owners who all say the same thing. If the mayor's office does not take action, they could be out of business. Take a walk around the block with Scott Coors. And this corner smells like fetid urine in the morning. It's a fairly, it's fairly off-putting. And you get a good sense of an inescapable problem. Would you like to park here and walk through that? <laughs> I wouldn't. His business and others at Broadway and 20th feeling under siege. Homeless encampments now surrounding them on three sides. It's a little unnerving because you got people that. Did y'all know that it was homeless encampments over in Denver? I've been to a lot of city. I walked down Skid Row. I've documented it. It's on my other channel. I've had a lot of conversations. I've walked over and seen the encampments over in D.C., literally right down the street from the White House. Did y'all know that this was in Denver? How did Denver escape the front of the congregation for this long? John, best you live there? Oh, man. Everybody that flew into Boulder, Colorado, y'all didn't go over to Denver and see what was happening in there? Is Denver a red or a blue state? Did you guys know that this is what was happening over in Denver. Yes, Azriel, Denver is another sanctuary city. They are letting people in. They're extremely over budget. They're badly managed by this man that's right below me. See, it's not just the black cities. It's also the white cities. So shout out to, to Mayor Johnston. And Denver and the business owners are saying that it is a horrible place to live in and is becoming worse every single day. They are setting up tents over at Denver on the street right in front of people's businesses and the condos that's literally right there in front of them. This is America, ladies and gentlemen. This is America. You don't know what mental state they're in, and I don't, you know, you don't know. They're probably not dangerous, but you don't know. Coors owns Triangle Bar, which has been here for decades. Triangle Bar dates back to the 70s when it uh, was one of the first um, gay establishments in town. But its continued existence. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> did he say that it was a zesty establishment? Wait, wait, wait. I thought, uh, did I miss that? Hold on. Let me back up a little bit. You're not just gonna, you're not just gonna slip that in there, and then make that make sense for me. And that don't mean that you should be going out of business as a business. But I just want to make sure that I heard what I heard when I heard it. He didn't just say that, did he? 70s, when it uh, was one of the first um, gay establishments in town. Yeah, this is a blue city. This is definitely a liberal city. And y'all voted based off of it. And you got what it is that you voted for. 
You got what you voted for. Now, that does not mean that you're not entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and that you shouldn't have safety and protection with regard to how it is that you're running your business. It's all starting to come together a little bit more. Okay, okay. But its continued existence is now in jeopardy. <laughs> if the city doesn't do something, we're not going to survive this. The same is true just around the corner at British Bulldog. What we do is sort of that old neighborhood bar thing. That's kind of our shtick. Yeah. Like Owner the Mark Burzins has never seen things this bad. Sales for both British Bulldog and Triangle Bar down 40%. Sales are down 40%. Sales, man, listen, listen, listen. If you have any business and sales are down 40%, get ready to close the doors. Don't hold on to it. Don't try to hold on. Don't try to stick around. Don't try to just be there or whatever. If sales are down 40%, it's over. It's over. And because all of these politicians, like the mayor that's below me right here, do not understand how to look at things from a business perspective. They don't know what take what it takes in order to make a city great. Man, let me tell you something. I can go in and I can fix any city, but the first thing you have to do is you have to inspire people. You got to fix the mentality. Then you got to lobby for all of the resources that you need in order to fix the school system. Make sure that public safety is number one, because if people don't feel safe, then they're not going to come. You got to make sure that you... I'm not going to give you all my keys. Maybe I'll run for... You know what? I'm never going to run, but maybe I'll put somebody else in office. Maybe I can get Rita to run. Let me see. Let me see something. Give me a second. Let me see what's happening out here in these streets. Because I, I know I can manage it through somebody, and I can put somebody in a great position of power. I know how to fix a city. If you know how to fix a business, you can fix a city. Hello. Hey, what up? I'm on a live stream. You busy? Uh, Nope. Just packing my bag. What's going on? Hey, you want to run for a uh, run for a political position? You be perfect. Uh, you be perfect. <laughs> you be perfect. Sure, just tell me what they say. Black woman, um, married for twenty years, understands things, have built houses, uh, volunteer within a community mentor to so many young people and women and have done some incredible things mother you can identify with the people girl you hmm. You're giving me an idea out here in these streets <laughs> you ready to run for office yep we got to figure out what office we want you to run for first though okay we're about to get you elected all right i'm gonna talk to you later i could i could do it why would i do it when i could just put some other people in a position of power Come on, man, let's run it up. Since Firestone Tires closed three months ago. There's trash, mattresses. She um, can do way better sadly, than this. A lot of really I know that. unpleasant well, things going on. It's maybe even tougher on our staff. You know, not only has our staff seen their tip bucket decline by 35%, 40%, mm. which is their take home pay, but uh, their safety is a real concern. We witnessed the problem firsthand at Cheese Meat Board a charcuterie shop in between Triangle and British Bulldog. What can we do for you? I was just like, let me grab a sandwich. We have sandwiches. I don't know. I was just going to grab a sandwich. We don't have samples. Samples? That's not Yeah. The fam just walk up in there and take some food while they was in there filming? <laughs> These cities is horrible. Horrid. Horrid. These cities are absolutely, positively horrible. Fam just walked in there while they was filming with the camera on them and was like, yeah, I'm just looking for some samples. She's like, no, we don't sell samples. Fam walked over there and said, let me get a sandwich to go for free. Good God almighty. They're samples. That's what those are. No, no, no. They this cost, cost money? Like yeah. 25 cents? Yeah. That is it. And fortunately, we don't see that nonstop, but we see it enough that it's that's crazy. A little discouraging. For now, these businesses are just fighting to stay open. I'm it's over. a firm believer that every person does deserve a house. Close. But we're also in dire need of more immediate action. We just can't sustain these kind of losses forever. In Denver, 
we would really like to see somebody in a position of authority do something. Russell Haythorn, Denver 7. Hmm. We if you can't get your mayor or anybody to listen to the business community and the people that are the lifeblood that then give, because the, the small business community are, is literally your lifeblood. That's your lifeblood. If you can't get these people on board and give them what they need in order to be successful, if you don't have the ear to the mayor, it's over. But that's not the only thing that's going on in Denver. Did you know that eviction filings in Denver is the highest that it's ever been in history? All right, let's get started tonight with the record number of evictions the city of Denver is heading towards. This comes as tenants struggle to keep up with soaring rent. Denver 7's Brandon Richard shows what some community leaders are now calling on Mayor Mike Johnston to do amid fears that this situation is about to get worse. Well, Denver leaders are still working on next year's city budget. It won't be finalized here for a few more weeks. Now, tomorrow morning, the Denver City Council will deliver a package of recommendations to the mayor asking that he increase funding for a variety of programs, including rental assistance. As rent soars. Now, remember, guys, I don't want you to forget, even though I don't necessarily have a clip to play for you today, but Denver is one of the cities. Now, Chicago is leading the pack as far as sanctuary cities and migrant crisis and funding all of this migrant crisis and stuff, right? Denver is one of the cities that's at the forefront of the movement, along with Atlanta. Denver, Chicago, New York said, we can't take it. We, we, we ain't got it. We, we done over here. Eric Adams said, all right, all right, I got you, Millionaire Morning Show. I don't want to be brought to the front of the congregation anymore. Don't be messing up my reputation. I see you, Eric Adams, making the adjustment over there in New York. I got to give credit where credit is due. He said, we no longer having you. We evicting you. You got to go. Listen, we no longer a sanctuary city. I'm backtracking. I'm pivoting. It's okay for me to change my mind. But Denver is at the forefront of the movement that is receiving buses on a regular basis and increasing funding as far as where they're allocating monies to. They can't allocate monies for public safety. They can't allocate monies for eradicating homelessness. They can't allocate monies in order to help get people's jobs. They can't allocate monies to do anything that's meaningful to the re residents of Denver. But the one thing that they can allocate money to is... Course ...in Denver, so have the number of evictions. The latest data from Denver County Court shows over 1,100 eviction filings in both August and September, bringing the total number this year to more than 9,200. Officials with the Denver Department of Housing Stability believe there could be another 3,000 eviction filings by the end of the year. It's so that will bring the number to close to 13,000, between 12 and 13,000 projected people in Denver, not just the Denver surrounding cities, but Denver alone, projected filings to be around 13,000 people getting removed and evicted from their homes. And that don't even have nothing to do with the foreclosure rate that's happening over there in the city. 13,000 people more than ever before in history over in Denver is being evicted out of their homes and eviction filings are being filed every single day amongst all of the other problems such as the migrant crisis and uh, business owners and business being down over 40 percent and there is an exodus in the city and i thought that the marijuana stuff was supposed to solve all of that over in denver you remember when they was pitching us that i remember when they said that the taxes that they was going to levy over there on 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 marijuana sales and and legalizing weed was supposed to fix all of the financial problems that's in these cities Remember when y'all fell for that one? Remember when they started legalizing it over in Denver first, over there in Colorado? Hmm? Remember that? Interesting, right? Isn't that interesting? Hey, um, I'll get him, get him myself. I'll get him about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, isn't that interesting? Every single thing that is happening out here in these streets they sold you, they pitched you, they hope you forgot about it in order to continue to legalize and get stuff in office, but they never saw for the core root of the problems. And now we're moving over into the next issue. They're going to give you another issue so that they can fix it for you and that you can keep them in offices. Don't worry about it. We're going to get there. 
unbelievably expensive. People cannot afford to live in Denver and they can't afford to live in Colorado. Zach Newman is co-founder of the Community Economic Defense Project, which provides legal help for people facing eviction. His group has now joined with more than a dozen other community organizations to call on Denver Mayor Mike Johnston to provide more money for emergency rental assistance. Mm. It's not just the humane thing to do to stop. So it. they're not going to fix the core root of the problem of why people are getting evicted in the first place. The only thing that they're going to do is allocate more monies for emergency rental assistance. Throwing money at a wall and hoping that it sticks. Using taxpayer money to throw it at a wall and hoping that it sticks. Let me tell you something. Social programs do not work. Rental assistance programs do not work. It does not solve for the core root of the problem. All it does is kick the can down the road and then you start to tax the people more and you never give that money back or you never lo lower the budget by then becoming a lot more resourceful and running a city like a business. Instead, you continue to throw money at the problem that's just going up in vapors, up in smoke, and then it, you, you're right back where you was next year, where you were this year. It does not work. It does not work. You're still suffering and you're still eventually going to find yourself in the same position as last time. Evictions, um, it also is the most cost effective way to respond to homelessness, stopping it in the first place. The mayor proposed spending 12.6 million on rental assistance, Jesus. but the community groups and a majority of city council members want the mayor to increase that by 17 million, bringing the total to 30 million. Bluntly put, this is an emergency. I think we there's no question that the funds will be needed. We're talking about shelter. We're talking about more people becoming unhoused and ending up living on our streets. At a recent hey, that's the term that they're using now. More people becoming unhoused. You're not homeless. You're just unhoused. You may have van life. You may go ahead and get you a tent. I know it'd be cold in Denver in the wintertime. But you're not homeless. You're just unhoused. In budget hearing, the mayor explained why funding rental assistance was more difficult this year. The big challenge we're facing here on rental assistance is last year we had about 20 million of funding. 17 million of that was state and federal. That all disappeared. We took our investment from $3 million to $12 million, which is I think almost a 300 to 400 percent increase in our city commitment. So we are all in on this. Still, the council and community groups hope the mayor's team will be able to find additional money elsewhere to help. And guess what? They're continuing to increase the budget that they're allocating for migrants and social programs such as rental assistance, but they're still not solving for the core root of the problem. You have all of these people in the room. Let me show you what all of the people look like. Hold on. You got all of these people in the room and ain't nobody got a clue of how to solve for the issues that you're facing in the community while you're also taking on more migrants and additional monies is being needed by the taxpayers in order to make sure that you continue to make this happen. The people don't want it. Anton from AntonDaniels.com is telling you that it's a bad idea. You're, you're literally throwing money at the wall. Evictions is up more than it's ever been before. It didn't solve for it last year. It's not going to solve for it this year. Then you're going to be asking for more money next year, and then you're going to pass that cost over. And to the taxpayers, businesses are failing. Sales is down over 40%. Tent cities is popping up all over the country. Now you got everybody got a tent on every corner. People don't want to go down to downtown Denver. Man, I got to make me a I, – I literally, when I do my tour next year, I'm stopping in all of the places that is smutted out in addition to doing all of my different tour stops and my fireside chats. Horrible. Absolutely horribly ran city. Find additional money elsewhere to help thousands of people stay in their homes. In Denver, Brandon Richard, Denver 7. So here's my question as we continue to evaluate all of the different things that is happening across the United States of America. Here's my question. Yesterday and over the weekend, or actually last week also, I asked you guys, who's the worst mayor in America? And by a long shot, a lot of y'all said Mayor Brandon Johnson. Is Mike Johnston, this guy right here, is he also on the list? Is he in the running? Now, we know that Brandon Johnson over there in Chicago, second grade teacher, he's a good guy by all, all metrics, right? From all optics, he's not an actual bad person inherently, but just a bad mayor. 
The question now that we're compiling this list, because by the end of the year, I want to have a victim Olympics list, is Mayor Mike Johnston over in Denver also a part of the running for the worst mayor in America? Number two or three, y'all still say that Brandon Johnson is at the top? <laughs> 